Some of my subscribers were asking about the clock tuner for Ryzen. What is CTR and how do you use it? <laughs> clock tuner for Ryzen, designed by Onesimus, was designed in order to be able to find you the best overclock for the least amount of power usage. So it's actually not designed to find the highest possible overclock that you can get out of your CPU. It's more designed to find what is a reasonable overclock for a reasonable amount of voltage for your specific type of CPU that's gonna allow you to optimize your performance and still maintain good power efficiency. Clock Tuner is designed to do just about everything for you automatically with very little input from the user. Before using Clock Tuner, there's a couple of things that you'll need to do. My recommendation is to first reset your BIOS. That's gonna set everything back to the factory defaults and allow you to kind of move forward from that point. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is not use AI Tuner. So make sure that if you're using an AI Tuner or an auto overclock that you disable that. Don't have your RAM overclocked for this step. You wanna make sure that your core voltage on your CPU is set to automatic. You also wanna make sure that your load line calibration for ASUS boards is set to level three. Depending on your board, they recommend level two, level three, or level four, and you can try different combinations of the three. You're also gonna to need to disable precision boost overdrive. You wanna go into your overclocking settings and turn that off. And that's because we're gonna be using Clock Tuner for Ryzen to do an all core manual overclock. So you don't want precision boost overdrive jumping in and trying to set higher frequencies based on precision boost. Some people have recommended setting your SOC voltage to 1.1 volts. And that's the voltage that's gonna feed things like your memory controller. That being said, I would first run CTR with an auto voltage on your SOC and go from there. You may also wanna turn off your VRM spread spectrum. And the BIOS actually recommends that you turn that off if you're doing any significant overclocking. Now I've personally found with my 5950X that it doesn't matter what the VRM spread spectrum is set to, uh, the results that I get from overclocking seem to be the same regardless. So those are kind of the main settings that you wanna set before running Clock Tuner. Then it's as simple as download and install Clock Tuner and run the diagnostic mode. Clock Tuner is set up to automatically, based on what CPU you have, have specific settings to already know for your particular type of CPU, what are some of the best settings to use to run it through its diagnostic mode. Now you can play with those settings if you're familiar with them and modify them and change them in order to get better results. Now what Clock Tuner is gonna do is it's gonna run a bunch of stability testing using Cinebench R20 and also using Prime95. Now, when it runs through its stability tests, uh, you may find that your computer may blue screen or reboot. I've actually run into a lot of mixed results with CTR. Once CTR is finished running, it's gonna establish three different profiles for your CPU based on load. So what it does is it sets up one profile for workloads where there's only two, three, or four processors in use. Then it looks at higher level workloads, and then again, even higher level workloads. So it's kind of looking at you know light processing, gaming, and then heavy workloads. So it's gonna set your overclock profiles. Now what CTR will let you do is then automatically apply those profiles when you load CTR and load those profiles into Windows. Now if you can get CTR to come up and automatically calculate those three profiles for you, then it will automatically switch between those profiles based on your CPU load. Now unfortunately, one of the things I found with CTR was that the first time I ran it, it told me that my ideal overclocking profile for all cores was 4.5 gigahertz at 1.25 volts. Now I already knew that from manually overclocking my CPU. So it wasn't really providing me with any new information. I tried a few different settings. I tried running CTR a couple more times and I found that the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth times that I ran it, it was just blue screening, spontaneous reboots, and it actually was not able to successfully set up those three profiles. If CTR works for you, then you can let it manage your CPU, which will result in lower voltages, higher efficiency, and higher clock speeds. But if you're liquid cooled, and you're looking for the highest overclock that you can possibly get out of your CPU, CTR is not gonna get you there. What Clock Tuner for Ryzen does is it sets your frequency and then slowly alters the voltage by about six millivolts in increments in order to find the lowest stable voltage that your CPU will run at those higher overclocked clock speeds. Now after playing with CTR for several hours, trying tons of different settings, blue screening, rebooting, and running into a lot of different issues with it, I've decided that in my case, it's just a lot easier to do a manual overclock and to use precision boost overdrive. And all said and done, 
I've actually found that the differences between a manually set overclock, regardless of what settings you have for SOC, core voltage, different CCX settings, uh, and even using the dynamic OC switcher, the Precision Boost Overdrive actually has kind of an ideal performance curve. And sure, you can take your Precision Boost Overdrive, you can do a dynamic OC switcher with something like the Dark Hero motherboard, and you can find a higher all-core clock speed, say, 4.5 gigahertz at 1.25 as recommended by CTR. And that'll be a little bit more efficient than using Precision Boost Overdrive to do the same thing. At the end of the day, I have to give a lot of credit to AMD for their Precision Boost algorithms. Out of the box, the Precision Boost works probably just as good, if not better, than what you're gonna get from trying to do a manual overclock. And for the amount of time and effort it takes to plug in a manual overclock, you may be better off playing with Curve Optimizer and with Precision Boost Override. When I first built the system, I messed around with CTR a little bit, but I found that it was just a little bit less of a pain to take the time to learn Precision Boost Overdrive and Curve Optimizer in order to get those settings kind of dialed in. And with the Dynamic OC switcher, setting my CPU to 4.5 gigahertz at an all-core voltage of 1.25 nets me some of the best results. And to CTR's credit, it did recommend 4.5 at 1.25 volts, which I know is a very good stable overclock for my system. Now is CTR a magical application that can fix all your problems and overclock your system for you with no hassle? Absolutely, if it works for you. It's worth giving it a shot. If everything goes smoothly, you'll have three overclock profiles automatically set, no fuss, no muss. But if you're getting blue screens like I've been the last couple of runs, it may just be easier to go into your system and use either dynamic OC switcher or just use precision boost overdrive. So in summary, CTR can help you with undervolting your CPU and finding an efficient overclock. But if you're interested in pushing your CPU to the highest possible overclock that you can achieve with your cooling solution, you're probably gonna have to learn how to do it manually. And besides, half the fun with this hobby is learning all of the different aspects of how to tweak your system, cool it, and set it up for peak performance. But that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.